And we welcome you on Facebook Live to our first official edition of On The Mark. I'm 1010 Win Sports Director Mark Rene. To my right, your left, is Maurice Samuel Vaughn. You know him better as Big Mo Vaughn, former Major League Baseball star, a three-time All-Star, in fact, and the 1995 American League MVP. Mo's here to talk to us today about his MVP collections. Somehow you got into clothing. How did that happen? Just a need, you know what I mean? Um, MVP collections, we started in 2016, uh, August. So it's only about nine or ten months okay. in. Okay. We're already, uh, you know, we started as an e-com site. We have now, we're in ten uh, DXL stores geographically across the country. Um, so we're doing very well. We're doing very well at this point. Um, we're trying to create a lifestyle look uh, for the big and tall, big and tall customer. Um, being able to go out and, and look like everybody else. And that's how the whole thing started. Now, this is an interesting dynamic because generally athletes don't become designers or get involved <laughs> in the clothing business. Tennis players do. Right. They have to wear, you know, obviously different things every day, but it's not like, you know, Mo Vaughn or anybody else can go and design a uniform. So how is it that you get into the clothing business? Just, I, you know, me being the, being the customer, just really going out and not having any, you know, style choices. Okay. So I said, why not, you know, produce this for myself? Listen, I've been lucky enough to have disposable income, you know, that I could go out and get my stuff tailored and buy certain things and then spend the money. Um, but why not try to bring this to, to, to the average guy and, and give him an opportunity to have some style also. So that's, that's, that's exactly how this whole thing started. Now, for those who may not remember, Mo was a major leaguer, ended his career with the Mets back in 2003. We'll, we'll lead up to that. Yes. I, I, I'm so glad that uh, Art Howe's not here <laughs> to, to really scold me for uh, how I covered that team back then. But uh, you started your career with the Red Sox in 1991, but I should even go before that because you were born in Connecticut, Norwalk. You went to Seton Hall. And some of your records at Seton Hall, 28 home runs as a freshman, the uh, 57 for your career, and somehow 218 RBIs. I, I think it would take kids now six years, Mo, to catch you. Might have been the bat you know, we were using, you know. But listen, I played on some great teams there. Um, Love Seton Hall University. Um, being in this area, it's, it was it's just uh, being back here, working here, doing other things here, playing for the Mets was, was uh, something that, uh, that, that I wanted to do. Um, it didn't go so well for the Mets, but still, I was here and, 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 and had a good time doing it. So I, I love, to, love to see Hall University. Let me backtrack a little bit. We'll go back to the beginning with the Red Sox. Your debut, June 27th of 91. So it's almost 26 years ago. Does it right. feel like it was that long ago? You know, I've been out of the game since 2003. So it's, you know, it's been a little bit, it's been a little while. I've been fortunate enough to do some things after life, so time has been moving fast. But, but uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's been some time. So you start June of 91, you spend all of 92 through 98, if memory serves, with the Red Sox, played for three different managers, and this is a theme that will run through your career, no fault of yours, but Butch Hobson, uh, Kevin Kennedy, and then I think Jimmy Williams were your three managers right. in Boston. What stood out about your time up in Boston, aside, of course, from the 95 uh, MVP season? Listen, Boston, um, very, very tough place to play. Um, we hadn't won anything. I think the the scrutiny there was was very very tough, but I think it it helped me as a person. Um, you see now, you know we got you know three 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 world championships. I'm sure uh, it's it's nice. It's a great environment, but it was it was tough. Um, people wanted to win. We weren't winning, but I think it it also taught taught you something about going out and and, and standing up for yourself and and also you know being being accountable. For, for, for when things didn't go right, and I think that's what you had to do when you were there. Obviously very timely now because the Yankees are up at Fenway. They were supposed to play three, got rained out last mm -hmm. night. What was it about the Yankees-Red Sox rivalry for a guy who grew up in this area who knew about it already, but to be a part of it, what was that like? I could be, you know, I don't know. I just always, the Yankees made me lift my game. Mm -hmm. uh, being from Connecticut, I watched Yankees, you know, WPIX, you know, Phil Rizzuto, sure. you know, all those guys back in the day. Um, I could be off for 40 and come to Yankee Stadium and just get it together. <laughs> I think that's just the way that it, that it was. I think they, I think the Yankees made me a better player, uh, no doubt about it. But I always wanted to play well. You know, I went to high school up in up in Paul in New York. I went to college at Seton Hall. From the area, I always wanted to play well against them. Who, uh, if anybody, really stood out as as your number one nemesis on the Yankees? All the times you faced them, was there any one particular pitcher? I know you caught Jeter sort of at the beginning and really the, the core four uh, at the beginning of, 
of their whole run. I just think uh, they had some great players and some great teams. You know, Torrey was a great manager, Zimmer on the bench. You, know, you see Randolph and Mazzilli and all, you know. But I think Derek Jeter was the catalyst of all of it. And I think whatever he has gotten in life, he's earned it. He's, he was a great captain, a great player. Um, he handled things. So to me, he was the epitome of what the Yankees are. And look, now, you know, you know he's going to own a team. I think he's going to put a stamp on it also, punch. you know. So I think, uh, I think, uh, but him, I, 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 uh, I think he was, was, was the one for me that always stood out. What do you think about players becoming owners, especially Jeter and especially the Marlins? Because obviously it's not the Yankees. It's something that I don't think anybody expected. Listen, I think that he's going to do well wherever he, went, wherever he goes. He knows he's played a key position. He was always in the right place at the right time. He's a tremendous student. He's, he's going he's gonna to put his mold in the stamp on that team, no doubt. He's going to be fine. Now, everybody says he'll be successful. Joe Girardi last night after the rain out was talking about that. But CC Sabathia, I think, had the money quote. They asked him if he had any aspirations to be an owner. And he said, heck no, I'm too lazy. I just want to <laughs> sit around and watch sports. Where would you fall on that as far as ever becoming an owner of a team? Listen, if, you know, if, if you had the capacity, you'd love to own a baseball team. You know, uh, um, I've, I've been working since the day I got out of baseball. Mm -hmm. um, I know what it is to put an organization and people together and make things work. I've, I've been successful, of course. You know, you know uh, that, would, that would be a, a great opportunity, no doubt. Now, we mentioned your time with the Mets wrapping up the last season plus of your career back in the early 2000s. But before that, between Boston and New York, you had to stop out west with the Angels where you played for Terry Collins. What was that like? Listen, I, um, I like Terry Collins. Uh, Look, he's, he's, they're struggling right now, but he took them to the World Series a couple, yep. a couple of years ago. Um, they'll get it together. Listen, you know, it's, you know, it's, it's tough, it's cold, it's, it's, it's this or that. People go through things, but they have enough talent, enough pitching, you know, you know, Cespedes getting back in the lineup, they're going to be fine soon. Now, one of the cool things that I thought about your career even before you got back to New York to play for the Mets was the couple of years that you spent with the Angels, especially 2000, where you played all but one game that season. Um, you got hurt in, I think it was late August, and it wound up actually costing you the entire 2001 season, but you finished out that season out in Anaheim. Yeah, I, You're I blew a tough my, guy, I, I blew my bicep off, I, well, right off in the seat here. Um, but, you know, knowing me, you know, I'm like, man, I'm, I'm going to try to try to make this happen. And I went out there and played, and, I, you know, for me it was... I always was taught by, you know, a guy by Mike Lisa was my hitting coach. I had Jim Rice, you know, up in Boston. And the main thing that they guys always taught me is you got to be on the field to get your at-bats. You get your at-bats, you're going to put up your numbers. So you play through things. You, you get through it, you figure it out. And listen, it cost me another season, but I was determined to finish that one. I heard the collective groans out there on Facebook Live when you mentioned Mike Eastler because he killed the Mets when yeah. he was the Pirates. He just destroyed. He was... Back in the 70s and 80s, what Daniel Murphy is these days right. to the Mets. And yeah, was, obviously had never played for them, but gee I speak whiz. to them to this day. You know, we were good friends, and uh, he changed my whole career around. I changed my stance in 30 days in 1993 in spring training, and I went on to hit from that day forth. It's amazing. Okay, so you wrap up with the Mets 2002, the full season, and then the first part of 2003. Played for Bobby V, Bobby yeah. Valentine, mm -hmm. and then Art Howe. Uh, what was it like playing for those guys? Very different personalities. Listen, I... I I wasn't playing well, so I'm sure they didn't like me very much, um, which is okay. You know, things happen. Uh, I just never gave. I was never able to give New York what what I what I had, which is which is disappointing. But but things happen. Listen, you know, I knew you know when I you know I got hurt over in Milwaukee. Um, I knew when I took my shower, and I put my put my clothes on, and walked out that I was I was done. Mm -hmm. And the biggest thing that athletes have to do is you have to figure out how to get to the next life, you know, and move on. And I just knew I had to, had to, had to get, get started, and I was able to, to get into affordable housing with my partner in 2003, and I've been going ever since. But it wasn't easy. You know, it wasn't easy to trans, you know, transformation. Um, you don't know who's going to know you for what anymore. It's a whole big process. But, you know, you, you, you got to get going. You got to do things, and, and, and you got to move on. I was able to do that. I want to get back to the MVP collections. I like when you say move on, because anytime I hear somebody say move on, it makes me think of <laughs> move on. It's very odd, my thinking sometimes. So you wrap up with the Mets um, May of 03. I think you played two games in St. Louis. 
But the one before that, well, that started that series, you hit a home run. That was your last hit in the major leagues. Right. How about that? I didn't even realize that. That's not bad. That's not bad. Thank you. I think Ted Williams, this. Roberto Clemente, and you all went out wow. uh, with home runs. Appreciate it. memory serves. So that's pretty cool. You were also, by the way, and we should mention this because Jackie Robinson Day just passed a couple of weeks ago, uh, the last guy to wear number 42 for three franchises. And nobody else had done that. Um, Mariana Rivera, obviously, here in New York with the Yankees, but you with the Mets, the Angels, uh, and the Red Sox. How meaningful was it for you to wear Jackie's number 42? My, uh, my coach over there at Seton Hall, a guy by Nick, Nick Bonus, sat me down and you know, taught me what Jackie Robinson meant. He was a white guy. And he said, Mo, you need to understand this. You need to read this book, and we're going to discuss it. Um, Branch Rickey, Jackie Robinson, um, nobody could have done what, what those two did. Right. Gives us the ability to sit here on the show. All, all the other all great athletes you know, that have come behind should all be thankful for the, 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 the things that he went through. Um, and, and Jackie Robinson, Robinson Day is a great day, and, and it should always be. And they all work. And they all wear it. Exactly. You look like down that. and you say, wow, they're all wearing my number. <laughs> <laughs> they're wearing his number. Who's your favorite player to watch these days? I'm just curious. My favorite player, uh, I like watching Mike, Mike Trout. I just see okay. And I think I like watching him because it just seems so effortless. And I, everything was me for me was so hard. <laughs> and everything for him was just so easy. There's some other great lists, you know, there's some other great players. You know, I like my guys out of Boston, you know, you know. Mookie Betts and and, and, and and those guys also, um, but just you know, Mike Trout is just cool. You know, he's just very effortless at, at his game. Pedroia, Pedroia, the Killer Bees, exactly. Up there in Boston, all my all my guys. You know, they're 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 they're, they're playing they're playing you know playing well and um, they got a chance. Root for the Yankees or the Mets if you have a choice. I don't I don't know. You know, um, listen, the Yankees all the Yankees always win. You know, I would like to see the Mets, Mets really do something and get something going. Um, I know some of the guys over there, uh, I see them out, you know, I'm always talking to them, trying to, you know, when I see them, you know, just being positive. When you're losing in New York, it's, it's very, very tough. And you need to have some positive influence going because you know how negative it can, it can be. When you win in New York, though. When you win in New York, it's, it's great, you know, um, there's, there's nothing like it. Talk to us, if you would, about this sweepstakes that you have going on with the MVP collection. Thanks, you know, thanks for mentioning that. MVP collections, we have a, have a sweepstakes with, uh, with DXL, also on Jumpster.com. It's a sweepstakes where you can win a signed uh, uh, Mo Vaughn jersey. Also, you can win a wardrobe, a $100 gift certificate. There's, that there after, uh, there's also some runner-up uh, uh, things you can win also. So that's just a great sweepstakes for, to get along with MVP. Very cool. Thank you for your time. Thank you for having me. Enjoyed it. Great. First edition of On the Mark. That's Mo Vaughn. I'm Mark Renee from 1010 Wins. Thanks for joining us.